Hey peeps, how's it going? Um, I do apologize for the big delay of this video. This is, I think, my third or fourth time doing this video. I've had a lot of problems to do with not really knowing how shots are done and color correction and, you know, things like don't wear a shirt that has a big white section right here because it will reflect and if you it'll reflect that light and if you move um, it's going to change the color composition of the whole shot and all this technical stuff and so that's been going on I also really hurt my back really bad so I've just kind of been out of commission and uh, it's not healed all the way but I'm I'm back baby so I do apologize, thank you for being patient. This is a big learning process for me. And uh, I really love it, and it's terrifying, and I don't wanna let you guys down. It's a onward and upward type situation, so here we go. So this is a uh, musical hotkey video. This is actually my first musical hotkey video. Now you might be asking yourself, what is a musical hotkey? And uh, I like to think of musical hotkeys as little shortcuts, just like a hotkey on your computer. Um, it allows you to get from A to, let's say, F without having to go through B, C, D, and E to get there. I find they're very useful for rote things in music, like knowing what your key signature is in a given key or how to spell out chords or spell out any given chord let's say and that's actually what the first video uh, is going to be about is how to spell your chords out I really like the quote by the samurai Miyamoto Musashi and uh, he's known for the phrase from one thing no ten thousand things and what that basically means is the knowledge you learn let that apply to a lot of situations and it's really helpful in music especially because there's so much to learn and any advantage you can get so that you're not having to bloat your knowledge let's say uh, you can cut down on, on what you really need to have memorized yet have access to a lot of things now that may not make sense but as we go along I'll show you what I mean so uh, the hotkey that we're talking about today is called the master chord. Now, um, be forewarned, there's some other terms floating around on the internet, such as the mother chord, that has to do with something else. If you're interested in knowing what the mother chord is, check out Rick Beato's uh, video on it. And if you don't know who Rick Beato is in general, and you're a musician or a music appreciator, check out his YouTube channel. It's really badass. He's a very knowledgeable guy and gives hope to people like me because he's he's quite a bit older, but he's very successful on YouTube, and it's, it's nice to see. Because a lot of times with stuff like this, I feel like I'm very behind the game. And so it's nice to know that other people are doing it too who aren't necessarily spring chickens, let's say. So the master chord is a mnemonic device, is that right? So that you can spell out any chord um, in any key, but you only need to know one pattern. And so again, that's the idea from one thing, no 10,000 things. So there's all these keys. Generally, it's agreed on that there's 15 keys, or if you want to get technical, 30 keys. So knowing one pattern to use for these different situations, these 30 different situations, um, makes a lot of sense. It's economic. And that's a, that's a key word here, is economic. So hotkeys are about economy of knowledge, let's say. So you might be asking yourself, what is the master chord? What is this one phrase that we need to learn so that we can know how to spell everything out. <clears throat> so the notes are F, A, C, E, G, B, D. F, A, C, E, G, B, D. And that's it, okay? 
you can start anywhere you want, but if you start from F, it spells out the word face, and so over half the pattern is is already memorized for you. As long as you know how to spell the word face. Hopefully you do. If not, stop this video. You've got other priorities to work on, namely spelling simple words. Okay? Just kidding. Do whatever you want. So there's a few phrases I've come up with. I have it memorized so I don't have to use a mnemonic device. But it's really good if you don't have a phrase memorized, and right now it's the master chord we're talking about. But it could be anything, uh, especially when people are trying to memorize the spaces and lines on notation. Uh, you know, when you're reading music, they use a lot of things like, you know, good boys do fine always, all cows eat grass, and uh, those work okay. I like to make up my own because you can make them as ridiculous and offensive as possible or as you want. And uh, usually the more ridiculous it is, the more it's going to stick. So I came up with a few test phrases for you guys. And you can use them or you can use something else. doesn't matter. Okay, so the first one is face. So the first four letters spell out the word face, right? F-A-C-E. Those are the first four notes in this master chord, okay? So GBD is still unaccounted for, okay? So there's a few words we can use to memorize that. So here we have face, F-A-C-E. So it's the first four letters of the master chord. Face, the, which isn't included in the phrase, but we're, we have it here to make the sentence go more smoothly. So we have face, F-A-C-E, the, Giant G battle B dragon D. Face the giant battle dragon. Mo. All right, this is my favorite one. Face F A C E got G beat B down D. Face got beat down. Got it. It's a little violent, but if for some reason that one really sticks in my mind. I don't know what that says about me. We're not going to worry about it right now. And now for the most ridiculous of the phrases, I have face, F-A-C-E, gelatinous, G, batter, B, donkey, or donkeys, D. Don't ask me what it means. I do not know. Those are some you can come up with your own, like I said, and actually I encourage you to do that because uh, if it's personal to you and you're happy with what you came up with, it's going to stick more. A few notes really quick. Um, if I get to D, I just keep going. So F, A, C, E, G, B, D, F, A, C, E, G, B, D, and so on and so forth. You just keep Pac-Man in it. And you can also do the reverse. So if I'm going backwards for some reason, C, A, F, D, B, G, E, C, A, F, D. So it just keeps going regardless of what direction you're going. But most of the time, right now, you're going to be going left to right. Left to right. So let's test this out. What if we want to know how to spell out an F chord. Let's start easy, okay? Um, you just do the first three letters. Now, F chord meaning F triad, okay? F, A, C. F, A, C. Boom. What about uh, D? Okay, D triad. D, F, A. D, F, A. Bam. What about a G triad? G, B, D. G, B, D. Boom. So you just start from the name of the chord. So if it's F, you find the F note and you go, you count over from there. If you're writing this out, as far as if you're writing the master chord out, you're going to go from left to right. Okay. That's going forward in the pattern. Now, if you want to do sevenths, you just add on another note or another letter. If I want to know what an F7 chord is, I would go F-A-C-E. F-A-C-E. Which is really easy because that's face, right? So that spells out my F7 chord. Let's say I want to do 
a C7 chord. It's going to be C, E, G, B. C, E, G, B. Boom. Okay. What about a, uh, an A7 chord? It's going to be A, C, E, G. A, C, E, G. And so on and so forth. So you can do this for nine chords, 11 chords, 13 chords. Now, the one thing this doesn't do is it doesn't tell you what notes are sharp or flat. So if you're outside of the key of C, um, some of the notes are gonna be changed a little bit. And if you don't know what sharps or flats are, if that doesn't make sense to you, uh, do not worry about it right now. Right now we're just getting the basics, how to actually spell out a chord, and the spelling will never change for the most part. Um, altered chords aside, you're always, you know, an, an, an F chord, let's say, you're always going to have an F, an A, and a C in a triad, okay? Now, the A might be flattened, okay? Or the C might be sharpened, okay? It, it just depends. But right now, we're not worrying about that. We're just worrying about how to actually, what letters, what notes comprise, um, sorry, I'm blinking out. Oh, I did it wrong. Oak. So we're not worrying about sharps or flats. Unfortunately, you do need another hotkey for that, which we'll get to in the second hotkey video. So right now we're just worried about how to actually spell the chords out without any alterations or chord qualities um, like major, minor, diminished, augmented, so on and so forth. The way to get good at this is to do it a lot. Okay. Just like the way for me to get good at videos is to do a lot of videos. Thanks, Hal. That's a shout out to Halstead. And the way to get good at spelling chords out is to do it a lot. So pick out a chord and say, okay, you know, if I see a D7 chord, okay, again, we're not worrying about majors or minors. We're putting those to the side right now. Okay, this is the very base level of how to do this stuff. Let's say D7 chord. So I would start with D. D, F, A, C. Those are the four notes that are going to go in there. Some, depending upon the key, some of the notes might be sharpened or flattened. Excuse me. Just like I said before. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So just get used to spelling out chords and we can uh, add more on there later. So... If you're just jamming with your friends in your garage and, and you just really like playing guitar, let's say, or even drums, knowing how to spell out your chords is probably not going to be terribly useful to you. If you just like studying theory, go for it. If it's something you want to know, go for it. If you're in a situation, let's say you're playing in jazz or you're going into the studio or things are a little more sophisticated, you're getting ready to go to a music conservatory or you're a music major in college, you absolutely want to know this kind of stuff. It shouldn't even be an issue. You shouldn't draw a blank. I'm not saying that I came up with this, but I didn't learn the master chord from anybody. I just kind of came up with it on my own. It, it probably predates me. This is just my specific take on it. I've always had trouble spelling out chords until I came up with this hotkey to do it. This is a, a solution that I've come up with so that I don't draw a blank. And a lot of people do. It's very interesting when you try to start spelling things out. Most people's brains kind of draw a blank. This is trying to allow you to take that work out. This kind of basic stuff like spelling out chords shouldn't even be a thought. You should just be able to bleh. And some of that is drill and kill. You just do it and do it and do it and do it. This is a device to make that less painful, hopefully. So that's it for me. My name is Eric Blood, and may the groove be with you always. Hey. 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 Hey, guys. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. It really helps me out a lot. Also, for information on my upcoming projects and access to early releases of my music and videos, please head over to my Patreon page. I've 
link to it in the description below. Thanks guys. Cheers.